All right, part two. Starting with question 10 here. How many solutions and what type for the following quadratic function? A better question would be what kind of zeros or if this was set equal to zero. Um, but anyways, what we're looking at is a quadratic function can either cross at two spots, cross at one spot, or not cross at all. And so it can have two real solutions, could have one real solution, or it could have two complex solutions, meaning it has imaginary numbers in it because it doesn't cross the x-axis. Where that comes from is the discriminant, that part of the quadratic formula that is b squared minus 4ac under the square root. So, b squared, this is a, this is b, and this is c. So b squared is 3 squared minus 4 times 4 times 12. I don't even care what it is, except I know that 9 minus 4 times 4 times 12 is going to be a negative number. And when I take the square root of a negative number, I get imaginary numbers. And so that means I'm going to get plus or minus some imaginary number, and so I'm going to get two complex solutions. Um, had we come up with zero, you would add or subtract the square root of zero, and you'd only get one solution. Plus or minus the square root of a positive number, you would get two real solutions. So just keep that in mind. Solve the following equation. The next three, 11 through 14, are quadratic equations, and we learn to solve those by factoring, by completing the square, or by using the quadratic formula. Because nothing multiplies to negative 5 and adds to 2, I'm just going to go straight to the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2 times a. Negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 1 times a negative 5 all over 2 times 1. Negative 2 plus or minus the square root. That's 4 minus a negative 20, so that's 4 plus 20, 24, over 2. You can reduce the radical, 24, because it's 4 times 6. 4 times 6, the square root of 4 is 2, and 6 stays inside the radical. If we split this up now so that it's a little easier to simplify, we'll go over 2, over 2, and so you get your final answer of negative 1 plus or minus root 6. Um, that's the exact answer. You could also get the approximate answer by doing negative 1 plus the square root of 6 and negative 1 minus the square root of 6. So those are your approximate answers. Um, those approximate answers would come in handy on a multiple choice test per se. If you went and typed in your quadratic equation, x squared plus 2x minus 5, and graphed it. So you can see it crosses at just about 1.9 something and then negative 2 point something. And that, hmm, oh, we had a different window. So there's our negative 3 point something and our 1 point something, and that's what we got before. So, next one, first thing I notice is that it's another quadratic, and the next thing I notice is that you can divide by 2 on both sides and get x squared minus 12x plus 20. And so then it's factorable because 20 you can get 5 and 4 or 10 and 2 and so if you do x minus 10 
x minus 2 equals 0. So then either this equals 0 or this equals 0. x minus 10 equals 0, so x equals 10. x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2. And again, you could plug that in and see if your quadratic works. 2x squared minus 24x plus 40. So it crosses at 2, and then you can see it crossing at 10 over here. Um, next one, 3x cubed minus 48x. They both have a 3 in it, and they both have an x, and so I'm going to do it slightly different from the last one, just to show you that you can do something different. Leaves an x squared, 48 minus, divided by 3 is 16. And then this is the difference of squares. And so you can factor that into x plus 4 and x minus 4, because those conjugates always cross out the middle term, and so you don't have an x term. So either this first part equals 0, x equals 0, after you divide by 3, x equals negative 4, or x equals 4. Next one. Trickier kind of factoring because you've got a number out in front here. Two ways you can do it. First way is just sort of by knowing, well, it's got to be 2x and it's got to be x. And it's got to be 3 and 1, 1 positive, 1 negative. If I get 2 times a negative 3, I'll get negative 6, and then I can add a 1. So negative 3, add a 1, and if you multiply back out, you get what you started with. Another method that we did quite a bit was called the AC method, and you multiply 2 times negative 3 and get negative 6. And negative 6 and positive 1 multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. So if you split up your middle term into those two numbers, you can put a 1 there if you want, minus 3 and then factor by grouping. Pull out a 2x, x minus 3. Pull out nothing. You can pull out a 1 if you want to. doesn't really matter. But then you end up with x minus 3 being in common because the x minus 3's match up, and 2x plus 1 equal to 0. So either way you do it, 2x plus 1 equals 0, so 2x equals negative 1, so x equals negative 1 half, or x equals positive 3. All right, 15 is just like 10, just a little less cryptic. It's telling us, use the discriminant, and tell us what kind of roots we have. So b squared minus 4ac. So we have 8 squared, and yes, it's a negative 8, but after you square a negative 8, you get a positive number every single time. 7 and 3. 12 times 7 is going to be more than 64, and so you're going to get a negative number. So yet again, we get two complex solutions, because we're taking the square root of a negative number and getting an imaginary number. And so that gives us two complex solutions. We shall continue in the next video.